BMW of the first series of the second generation, 2011-2019 years of release. Good day if you are wondering is it worth buying a second generation BMW of the first series and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So unlike older models in which the Germans widely used aluminium body parts, in the first series the body is made exclusively of steel, and this can be considered a big plus, in the event of an accident, which is not uncommon given the driving style of many BMW car enthusiasts, replacement and repair of steel bodywork is relatively inexpensive. When it comes to corrosion protection, BMW cars have always been exponentially good in this regard, although on individual copies you can still find small foci of rust appearing on the trunk lid. It's extremely rare that dealers even had to repaint the fifth door as part of the warranty. Of course, if the car was poorly restored after an accident, there may be much more corrosion centers. But this is probably not the fault of the most qualified craftsmen who took up the repair and not the car itself. The interior of the BMW of the first series is well assembled and pleases with high quality finishing materials. So squeaks and crickets, if they appear over time, there will be few of them. After buying a used car, new owners should definitely pay attention to the amount of refrigerant in the air conditioning system. Due to its lack, the system works unnecessarily noisy and not always correctly. Very rarely the owners complain about the dying screen of the multimedia system. Fortunately, electronic glitches are not common in first series BMWs and most glitches can be eliminated by restarting the car. The base engine for the first series was the infamous 1.6 liter 4 N13 of the Prince series, which BMW engineers developed in conjunction with specialists from the PCA group. Depending on the degree of boost, the engine developed 136 horsepower, model 116i or 170 horsepower, model 118i. Using the example of a new motor, the specialists of the two companies demonstrated their full technical potential. But unfortunately, it quickly became clear that neither the Gary turbine, nor the direct fuel injection, nor the Valvetronic automatic valve lift control system was of any use if the engine began to deliver very serious problems, even with a mileage of 40-50 thousand kilometers. Motors differing only in the firmware of the control unit turned out to be extremely demanding on the quality of oil and fuel. Moreover, they often had to work in oil starvation mode. And all because few of the owners could imagine that on a practically new car the engine can consume up to 1 liter of oil for every 1000 kilometers. A little later it turned out that the increased oil burner is associated not only with the design feature of the 1.6 liter engine but also with damage to the oil separator membrane. A lot of criticism was also directed at the turbocharger the waste gate of which was often not functioning correctly. An openly unsuccessful gas distribution mechanism was criticized even more often. None of the owners could imagine that the timing chain could stretch for some 50-60 thousand kilometers. It's not surprising that the first buyers of brand new units, which by and large took on the role of guinea pigs, often drove before the chain jumped, after which they were forced to restore the motor. BMW could not ignore the flurry of criticism against the N13 series engines. After the 2015 update, it was decided to abandon the 136 horsepower version, and a year later, the 177 horsepower 1.6 liter engine also disappeared from the line of power units. From now on, the base engine was considered to be a 1.5 liter unit of the B38 B15 family, which developed 136 horsepower. Now, the 1.5 liter engine is installed on many BMW models and is generally considered good, but in 2015 it suffered from very serious childhood diseases. One of them is the backlash of the crankshaft bearing, which often manifested itself even after a mileage of 30,000 km. From time to time, due to this defect, the engine had to be replaced under warranty. Fortunately, BMW quickly reacted to an obvious problem. In April 2015, a modified 1.5 liter engine was installed on the one. However, this didn't in any way solve the problems associated with the destruction of the pistons and the failure of the turbocharger. The 2-liter gasoline engine of the N20 series, which was installed on the first series before the update, turned out to be far from ideal. Due to problems with the oil pump drive, the chain gradually began to make noise. Those owners who ignored the extraneous sounds that appeared soon had to deal with the restoration of the damaged engine. Those who managed to get to the service on time spent only on replacing the oil pump and chain. Very often the camshaft drive chain also caused problems. 
it began to make noise for a run of 60-70 thousand kilometers which ultimately ended with its replacement, which was not cheap at all. The 2 liter motor of the B48 series 184 or 224 horsepower which was installed on the first series after restyling turned out to be more reliable, although in this case it's worth making a discount on the fact that over the past 5 years since the renovation most cars with this power unit didn't manage to roll even 80-100 thousand kilometers. It's too early to draw unambiguous conclusions. Diesel versions account for 2-3% of sales at best. Before restyling, 1.6 liter engines versions 114D and 116D and 2.0 liters were installed on the car. The biggest problem with diesel engines is the rapid wear of the timing chain. It serves no more than 150,000 kilometers, and since the engineers of the German company placed it between the engine and the gearbox, the engine has to be removed from the hood to replace the chain. The cost of such a replacement completely eats up all the fuel savings. It's possible that these costs may be supplemented by spending on a new turbocharger, which on diesel engines also doesn't have a large resource. Do not forget that delicate injectors failed quite quickly due to the poor quality of our diesel fuel. It also leads to the rapid clogging of the intake manifold swirl flaps. Despite the premium status, BMW offered for the first series not only an automatic transmission but also a mechanic. There are no big complaints about the latter. A 6-speed Getrock gearbox may require replacement of synchronizers, but in general before a run of 250-170 thousand kilometers, no troubles should happen to it. Even the clutch in mechanics with careful operation is capable of serving about 200,000 km. Of course, when driving aggressively, the traction resource is easily cut in half. At one time, BMW was not afraid to install an A-speed automatic ZF on the first series, which even now is considered something unattainable for most Golf class cars. The box proved to be quite good. Of course, from time to time the owners complain about small kicks that occur when switching from first to second gear, but as the box warms up, they disappear. Interestingly, ZF has officially announced that the 8-speed gearbox has been filled with oil for the life of the vehicle, but since ZF engineers hardly assumed that the second, third and subsequent owners of the one could easily travel 300-400 thousand kilometers, it's better to change the oil from time to time. The interval recommended by mechanics is every 60-80 thousand kilometers. The more aggressive the ride, the shorter the change interval should be. The suspension of the BMW of the first series is a kind of puzzle made up of starts from other models of the German company. The engineers borrowed the front suspension from the 5th series sedan of the E60 generation and the 3rd series sedan, the multi-link rear suspension. But if there are a lot of light aluminum parts in the 3rd generation suspension, then for the hatchback of the 1st series, the winched metal was replaced with a cheaper steel. Since the one suspension comes from larger and heavier models, it can easily cope with our far from ideal roads. By and large, it's the suspension that can be called the strongest link in the BMW of the first series. Only rear shock absorbers and front struts are considered relatively weak, which serve about 80-100 thousand kilometers on our roads. Unlike the suspension, the steering in the first series is a problem on a regular basis. Quite often dealers had to change steering racks under warranty. A trick is also to be expected from the power steering electric motor. Often, Owners are faced with the destruction of the bolts used to attach the steering gear. When the number of complaints about this became too high, BMW decided to replace the aluminum bolts with similar steel parts. Another thing is that the replacement was not carried out within the framework of a revocable company, so that not all cars reached the dealerships. The BMW of the first series of the F20 generation has a lot of positive aspects. Excellent handling and dynamics, low fuel consumption, verified ergonomics and a good level of equipment. But they mainly concern consumer characteristics, which are easy to evaluate on a new car. When it comes to buying a second-hand hatchback of the first series, then this is the case when you need to measure 7 times and cut once. The hatchback of the first series is devoid of truly reliable engines. If you analyze all the offers in the secondary market, it turns out that the vast majority of cars are equipped with a frankly problematic 1.6-liter engine with 136 horsepower. Of course, over the years of production, some shortcomings have been corrected, but this doesn't fundamentally change the situation. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your view will definitely help others with the choice of a car.